Do I renounce evil? Well, of course I do. Evil isn't that hard to renounce because it is, after all, well, um, evil. It's the perfect example of a no-brainer. But that's where I'd be wrong. Evil isn't just the extreme version of slight naughtiness, nor is it a unique category of badness. In popular terms, it's the word we attribute to child killers and those whom the tabloids brand monsters. But in reality, it's the sort of moral choice that leads to behaviours that are destructive, and it applies to all of us. Look at the story of Cain and you'll see what I mean. Cain doesn't wake up one day and decide to be a very bad person. He lets a sense of personal injustice gnaw away at him over a period of time, presumably without addressing his growing anger either within himself or with anyone else. But how did this happen? What might this ancient text say to us today? Envy is destructive of both the jealous person and the object of their envy. Cain is cross about his brother's seriousness in bringing the best of his harvest to God when Cain himself just offers a token. Rather than learn about self-sacrifice, trust and generosity, Cain lets his envy grow into anger. The relationship is broken and there will be consequences to this breach. Now what this illustrates is the brute fact that there is no such thing as private spirituality or morality. What an individual thinks and feels and decides and does has a social effect. Other people are necessarily impacted by how any other individual behaves. Cain's envy grows into anger and his anger will have some expression and this expression will change the world for everybody else starting with those closest to him. An interesting feature of this, which we will all recognise and relate to, is that what goes on inside Cain becomes evident in his physical body. His countenance fell. It is said that the eyes are the light of the body, that we can look into one's soul when we look deeply into their eyes and how they hold their body. In other words, there is no hiding from the reality and power of what goes on inside our hearts and minds. This is an important recognition because there are some people who think we can separate a human being out into separate bits that can be addressed without reference to the other bits, body, mind and soul. But as St Paul makes clear in his letter to the Christian Church at Rome in chapter 12 verses 1 to 2, a person is made of all three and they are interdependent. Who we are shapes how we behave, and vice versa. My love of God will be evidenced not by my prayers, but by my relationships with others.